I'm not here to get roses, I have nowhere to put roses, but I gotta show you this because it's amazing. This one is called Frida Kahlo, and I think you can see why. And it is so highly scented, it's amazing. This one is Emily Bronte. What a beautiful rose. I'm not usually a big fan of yellow, but oh my goodness. Look at that. And as they age, they get more like buttery, creamy. Oh, just stunning. Okay, I guess I should go ahead and shop for the things I actually came here for. Good afternoon, friends. It's Heather at Bush Poppy Farm. Uh, it's, I'm getting a late start today. Have not been feeling well for much of the week. Dealing with migraine and a lot of nausea, but I got stuff I gotta get done, so I'm out here today. And it does feel good to be in the sun, getting my mind off of it. So, um, today is a kinda cut your losses kinda day. It's been quite chilly. Uh, you know, we still go down in the in the upper 40s Fahrenheit at night, which is actually very typical for us sometimes into like July. <laughs> Even if it might get 100 degrees in the daytime, we drop really low at night. That's that's normal. But it's been and I guess these are normal temperatures, too, for the most part. It's been like upper 50s Fahrenheit, low 60s during the day. Um, that's, that's pretty cold for May. Uh, and so the garden is responding as such. Things are growing but a, a lot slower than, uh, than normal. And, you know, I'm in a zone 9B and this is why, so, you know, the zone thing, that just gives you uh, an average of when your, of what your lowest temperature is. That's really all it does. It doesn't tell you anything about your highest average temperature or how much humidity you have, or uh, if you get rain or not in your zone. So, you know, comparing zones, is tough as anybody will know you know my 9b zone is way different from a central florida 9b um, or even a um like a much further north 9b so yeah i'm not sure why i went down that track but i guess the point is it's still been chilly and my peppers while growing are just creeping along so uh i went to the um nursery today to get bagged soil for the new green stock. And I have a couple plants already that I'm gonna put in there and then I got a few more. And I'm gonna actually put some pepper plants in there for the first time ever, some small kachuchas, and uh, just see what happens. I mean, I've seen people grow large things in there like corn and all kinds of stuff. So I know it can be done. Um, and that'll be in a totally different place. It'll be in the back part of the garden. It'll get a lot of heavy afternoon sun. That'll either be good or bad. Um, so yeah, we'll see. But I also got some more peppers and some more corn um, because I want to, for the little peppers that are not thriving, so you can see this bed is my pepper bed and it's pretty much, that's all that's in it, except for I did uh, direct sow some nasturtium seeds. Those will come up when they come up. But you can see the peppers are growing, but they're still very small. I just need to pull up, pluck out some of these grass weeds. And then that's a, actually a potato, which I don't want in here. I'm going to get rid of that too. But um, I went on and got a couple more peppers to pop in here in places where the pepper seedling just failed, right? So like right here, this guy, he's just never really going to do anything. So I'm going to pull that out and put this one in instead. It's a sweet banana pepper, okay? Um, and there's one here that did nothing, like literally just fried. Uh, here's another sweet banana pepper, so I'll put one there. And then I'm going to pop a bunch of marigolds around because I did not put them in this bed yet, and I definitely want to add them. And then we'll also have the nasturtium when they start to come up. So I'm looking forward to that. And then over here, um, this is the onion bed, but this bed keeps getting, these onions keep getting nibbled down to little nubs by, I don't know, bunnies or rodents or whatever overnight. And I've set traps and nothing's catching anything. So I'm just going to cut my losses because I do have some onions in the main part of the garden that are doing great. And so I'm not going to pull any of these up 
whichever one succeeds, succeed. But I am going to put this little block of sweet corn here. This is honey and pearl corn. So I'm going to pull out, this is um, old uh, tatsoi that went to seed. So I'm going to pull that out. I have that's a potato, I think. Um, pull that out, pull out some of these weeds and put the corn in in you know, a little block right here. And then I'm gonna put these peppers in as well, pop them around in places where I see, you know, really weak onions. And this'll just be a mixed bed and we'll see what happens. But I think that's better than just letting this bed sit here mostly empty because a lot of these onions just aren't gonna do anything. So I ordered two uh, packs of these. These are called bee cups and they're, they're fired ceramic they're handmade and they have a glaze in there that actually appears pink, pinkish to purple to bees uh, because they have a different vision than we do. We can't see this. And so it, it just kind of draws them to it. But I want to provide water to the bees because now that we're in our dry season, that creek bed is going to dry up real soon. And then they just, other than landing on the irrigation when it's running, they don't have water and it's really important to provide bees with water. So I'm gonna place a bunch of these all over the garden. They will get filled. Uh, I'm gonna put them here in this area, this raised bed area, because they have, I have sprinklers in here and the sprinklers will fill these every day. So I won't have to worry about doing it. In the back garden, I have another set that I'll put out as well. And we'll just see what happens. Hopefully the bees will enjoy them. And if they do, then I will buy more. Um, I, I will link, these guys below um they come in a lot of really pretty colors so it's also like a really cute addition to the garden right like a little ceramic flower basically um so i would love to support this company um and i think what they do is really cool so i will put the link below i'm not sponsored by them they don't even know who i am um but i i think these are really fun so i'm gonna get started uh but before i do i just wanted to show you the some of the things that I did take care of when I wasn't with you. So I have mulched, mulched with straw, the whole garden. You know, there is some bare dirt left. And the reason I did that is I want to pop sunflowers in there. So those will be a nice, like additional climbing pole for a lot of these um, squashes that are in here. And it'll fill in the space. Plus, sunflowers tend to be a little bit allelopathic. They kind of you know, deter weeds. And I can see that at the farm, the sunflower bed hardly has any grass at all in it, which is pretty awesome. So I think tomorrow when I go back out there, in order to, tra when I transplant the, the other seedlings into the new newly opened bed, I'm gonna interplant everything with sunflowers. And so that will really cut down on the, um, on the weeds and it will kind of double my growing space because those sunflowers will be ready before the other flowers are ready so then i can just cut them off and and we'll be good to go so okay so i mulched everything here popped in did i do that here no i, I was going to put in more uh peppers here but i forgot i had uh, planted sown radishes here uh the other day so i just i wet it down really good i refilled all the oyas and i put the straw down that should keep the moisture in the soil better but I did put two peppers here. These are black Hungarian. And then this, I don't know if that's a weed or an actual okra that germinated. So I'm leaving it for right now. Uh, I also tied up, my cucumbers are starting to, to grow. And so I started tying them up this, these little poles. And we do have a couple of cucumbers. So that makes me happy. This is uh, handmade pickles, which is gonna be awesome because I definitely want to make pickles this year. I didn't have, I had an absolute fail of cucumbers last year. And so I didn't have any, I had to buy some to make pickles, which is not terrible, but I want them to be my own pickles <laughs> that I make with my own cucumbers. Um, and these guys are actually still doing okay. So those are cucumbers. On the other side, I sowed beans and they're both climbers. Oh, I forgot to do that bed. Okay, so this bed, is you know it's looking rough i think this again is a, is a moisture issue even though the oyas are full and when you dig down you can feel the soil damp under there so i know that the root systems are getting it this is all beans in the front here but i think the soil just dries out too much on the surface so i'm going to pull out these peppers that are sad this one this one's okay that's black hungarian they can stay. But then I do need to put straw on this one. I, I just overlooked this bed 
and overlooked this bed, but it's doing well. This guy's on a sprinkler. We've got a few peppers over here. And you can see the nasturtium is coming along. Which one is this one? Jimmy Nardello. And I don't even remember what that is. That's an overwintered pepper that I popped in that I didn't have a name for, a label on. I don't care, it's fine. <laughs> so these guys are doing well and we've got blueberries coming along too. So I just have to, I still haven't run irrigation to the containers, the blueberry containers, this one. Then there's two more containers. I need to run sprinkler irrigation to them, but they're okay for right now. And I did give some support to the elderberry. Hopefully that will help. I should stake the whole thing, but it is a shrub. So it's in one of these uh, half circle contained metal things that, that should help. Um, beans are, are looking good. These guys are starting to climb. Peas, finally, finally making some progress on peas. And I hope to have some to eat in the next couple of weeks. I uh, planted two more tomatoes over here and added all the straw. And look, I just wanna show you. She's dust bathing. If you've never seen a chicken dust bathe, the first time you see it, you're like, oh my God, what's wrong with the chicken? Is she sick? What's wrong with her? No, they literally, and I have two pans uh, in the back over there with volcanic ash and stuff in it for them to dust bathe in. But look, she's closing her eyes. She's happy. Yeah, they, they get the dirt underneath their feathers. Look at her rolling her head. This is how they keep mites off of themselves, right? It's, it's a, and I actually add stuff to the bed, to the floor of this run, lots of herbs uh, that are also antimicrobial. Um, and I put that in their nesting boxes as well, but <laughs> look at her, she's so happy. <laughs> that back there, those are the, um, these are the two pans I have for them to dust bathe in, which usually they fighting over, but right now she just likes to be in the dirt. That's a uh, volcanic ash and diatomaceous earth. Okay, and then added the straw to you know, most of the rest of this bed. Like I said, the empty spots, I'm just gonna pop in some um, sunflowers. And I think that will be lovely. And and especially along this back here, cause they can just kind of grow up the back. Still haven't taken the mustards out yet. I'm not ready to pull out those potatoes, but when I am, that's when they'll come out. So yeah, these little empty spaces, we'll get sunflowers and then everything else, this should help hold in the moisture. And I'm really gonna have to tackle this rose bush at some point. It's a, it's just glorious, but boy, it's getting so tall and it's so dense. <laughs> it's hard to get through this archway here. And after being eaten to the ground, I've got some Utah tall celery that's actually coming back. And I'm super excited about that. And my little Salanova and Romaine is looking fantastic over there. I'm really happy. These, you know, tomatoes, eh, they're not, I, I would expect them to be bigger and bushier just like the ones in the back are but you know it's just colder up here so I'm just gonna give them time okay I'm gonna get started transplanting and uh, then probably run the irrigation again to fill these bee cups and settle all the plants in Okay guys, 
that's going to be it for me today. Um, it's getting late and tomorrow I'm going to be back out at the farm to hopefully get some string trimming done. There's just some basic stuff that needs to be done. Finish the weeding and get that bed set up and transplanted with Sinoglossum mystery rose and sunflowers. And then also this weekend coming up is going to be the green stock install. I've got lots of cool stuff for it. It's going to be a mixed tower, but I'm excited about it. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, you guys. I hope you have a wonderful time in your garden this weekend, and I'll see you in the next one.